Hi guys, sorry for this scary thumbnail. In this video, we are going to go deep dive into Deep Seek Coder LLM. Now, I would not like to claim that this is the best coder model out there because it is not able to beat GPT-4, but it is the best in the open source world. It is also able to compete with GPT-3.5 Turbo. Let's look at the model, but in this video, uh, we are going to approach the problem in a slightly different approach. So we are going to try to uh, keep in our minds the ways how the researcher has done the uh, modeling of this model, how the data has been trained and what aspects uh, the authors have put to uh, make this model and we are also going to have a look at some of the running cases in um, in in google collabs and in the kaggle notebooks but our approach uh, should be uh, so that someday we are able to make up a model for ourselves so with the intention of learning that ability to code a model for ourselves and make a model for ourselves let's get started with this video so deep seek coder model this is a model it has been trained from scratch on two trillion tokens or thousand billion tokens and with the composition of 87 percent code and 13 percent natural language in both english and chinese now it has various sizes ranging from 1 billion size to 33 billion size the sizes specifically are 1 billion 5.7 billion 6.7 billion and 33 billion and it has been uh super it has been tested on different available code models state of the arts or sota performance on different benchmarks such as most basic python problems or ds1000 abps and these are the models that are supported by this llm now we're going to look at the evaluation models but before that we can see here that the model has been pre-trained on a 4k window with 1.8 trillion tokens and then with the 16k window it has been trained on 200 billion tokens that is a long context pre-training and then we have the base model here okay so when uh, it is initially trained and after that when it is pre-trained again using an extended 16k window and an additional of uh, 200 billion tokens it resulted into this deep sea code base model but a base model is not strong enough to are smart enough or you know it's not it does it cannot reply in the format of an instruction so when you ask a question uh, it replies back it maybe will reply back with the same type of question so when you say what is the color of an orange it may reply back what is the color of an apple okay but when we fine-tune with the instruction uh, tuning or fine-tune with instructions on 2 billion tokens of instruction data this results in the instruction fine-tuned model it is the same way in which gpt3 has been instruction tuned fine-tuned to make it into chat gpt as we know so this is the deep seek coder instruct and after these two steps we have deep seek coder base so i'm gonna give it a short name so dsc which is deep seek coder so DSC base and DSC instruct. So let's look at the benchmarks now. Uh, where are the benchmarks? It is somewhere here. Okay. Here, let's look at the benchmark. Uh, we can see here it has been tested on different benchmarks. So we have the pre-trained model here. So code X01, code X02, code G X2. Then we have uh, Star Coder, Code Llama. This was very good. Star Coder was also very good. But now we have D DSC base. So in the DSC base, we can see 1 billion, 7 billion, 33 billion, 
and we can see the performance of you can see that in the dsc base performs a score of 56.1 which is very good among the pre-trained models for python and human evolve we in the multilingual we have 50.3 scores very good better than all the models here most basic python uh, problems we have the score of this overall you know ds1000 overall this has proven uh, to be a very good coder model below we have the instruction tune models so instruction tools uh, the author has very well uh, compared with gpt 3.5 turbo and gpt4 because these are the models that i really care about so dsa instruct it performs at par or even better with uh, when compared with gpt 3.5 turbo as you can see here on the right we have the plot for different uh, programming languages here so we can see the dsc 33 billion it uh, can perform well for all the programming languages here next uh, we see the performance of different codes llm on multilingual human evolve benchmark so in this benchmark we can see that there are different kinds of uh, programming languages here and we have the multilingual base models here we can see the dsc base uh, 33 billion parameter uh, performs very well in all the languages and in the instruction tune models it performs at par with gpt 3.5 turbo but it is still not able to uh, compare with gpt4 gpt4 is actually very good now this is the performance of different code llms on mbpp benchmark which is most basic python problems benchmark here also uh, we have a good score for dsc base 33 billion and in the instruction models also we are comparable to gpt 3.5 turbo but it's lesser than gpt4 so there is a uh, still uh work needs to be done and maybe the next work would be done by you because maybe the next model that you release is the best model which can do a lot of coding so these are the different benchmarks basically it says that basically when a paper is being uh you know uh, published and this website exists is because they're they have found some very interesting and they are able to beat a benchmark or so so here i think that it is very uh, good that they are able to beat the benchmark of gpt 3.5 turbo now let's test it out and uh, let's see so there are different uh, types of uh, tests that you can do the first is code completion so in the code completion we have for example from a, uh, this is the code let me copy the code here and let me paste it in a uh, collab Google Collab. Now I have uh, tested this out and I found that uh, the memory here, uh, if you go to runtime, uh, disconnect here and uh, you can uh, change the runtime here to uh, TP GPU. And this uh, model, you know, these uh, three 6.7 billion parameters not uh, will not be able to be handled by our Collab. A free collab so i need to change it to 1.3 so let me change this to 1.3 base and let me explain this code so this is a very very uh, easy uh, use case uh, of this model so from the transformers library we import the auto tokenizer that is used for tokenizing from text to numbers and uh, vice versa from numbers to text this is auto model for causal llm this is for starting off a model for causal inference causal is may uh, it means predicting the next token so we are going to import torch then tokenizer we're going to start this tokenizer we're going to load the model here 1.3 billion base and then we're also going to say trust remote code is true because we are running from our system here then you're going to load up the model auto model for causal uh, from pre-trained we're bring, going to bring this model up and uh, trust remote code to true and send to CUDA if available next input is write a quick sort algorithm this is our input prompt then this input is tokenized okay so we tokenize this input using this tokenizer which is an instance of auto tokenizer so tokenizer is input text we get the 
we return the tensors as pt and we send this to the model dot device so we are sending this to the same uh, device that we have instantiated that is CUDA now output is just the output model dot generate and put in the inputs here and we just print the tokenizer we print the latest output and we get out the results so let's run this and let's see if we are able to connect so this is uh, uh you know code completion this is code completion because we just give it a prompt and it is going to complete the code here now while this is running we can look at the next uh thing that is available this is uh known as a code insertion so this is different method let me go to kaggle notebook this time and paste it here and uh, let me select uh, an accelerator here uh, let's take gpu uh, p thousand uh, p hundred so in this code it's almost the same thing we import the transformers let's see the result here okay it's being downloaded so from transformers we import the auto tokenizer and auto model for causal lm then we import the torch we, uh, we start the tokenizer we load up the model and in the input text what we have is this so within this three uh, quotation marks we have this input this input uh, is actually a uh, part of the quick sort algorithm but here we define the special tokens which is fim begin and this is fim end so these special tokens it's not like that uh, you can define these tokens it has been defined by the developers who created this uh, model so this is strictly something that you have to follow uh, these tokens so if you want to do the code insertion kind of thing you need to put in this begin end and there is this hole here fim hole so here the uh, the the algorithm will run and will fill in the codes the missing codes in this whole portion so we'll run this so input is the uh, tokenizer uh, dot input text and output is the model dot generate and print the tokenizer dot decode so run this and uh, the previous one which was the uh, you know which was the code completion uh, here you can see that in the code completion we have this so this is the code completion we have this beautiful uh, code being generated this is code completion next in the kaggle notebook we are running this and the session has started so this is the code insertion because uh, we are going to insert the code in the in the center or somewhere uh, within the code there is a hole being created and we are going to insert whatever uh, the missing components are in inside in the hole in the place of the hole so the code uh, will output the following because this is missing and this should be in the hole itself so let's wait if the code is uh, able to generate that so it's loading up the model and it's loading up the shards shards you know they're different uh, if you have a let's say a 20 gb model and uh, if you create four shards so 5 gb model uh, there will be five parts four parts of 5 gb each so four shards now i think uh, there should be two shards here because one is of two so one of two has been downloaded it's downloading the next one but instead of waiting for this let's move on to the next uh, thing that you can do this is for model inference this is pretty simple it's like uh, an instruction so we go chat model inference so from transformers we import the auto tokenizer this we instantiate uh, start the tokenizer using the dsc 6.7 billion instruct so we need to change this because our free google collab won't be able to handle this so 1.3 billion instruct we load up the model here and this is the message here so role is user and content is write a quick sort algorithm in python then we load up the inputs same as usual this is the output being generated and this is the outputs being decoded uh, with the help of tokenizer and we are just printing the output so let's run this let's go to the notebook so it is still loading in the notebook next 
chair model inferences this next what you can do is repository level code completion so this is again a very detailed code that you can have a look at now please try this out i am not going to try this out you can also fine tune um, the dsc uh, with your own data but again we need a special format for your own data but this is something uh we would be able to do by ourselves once we create a good model for ourselves so i think in this video you got the basic idea of uh, the different kinds of models or sizes that are available here the different benchmarks that are being tested and uh, for different use cases this model can be used so first is code completion then we have code insertion we have chat model inference we have the repository level code completion now if anything has been completed please let's see this out this was the code this was the chat model inference so we, that is i think it's pretty good so it gave me the output here the algorithm works by selecting a pivot element from the array and partitioning to other elements. So we have this chat interface like output. And in the Kaggle, your notebook try to allocate more memory than it's available. It has restarted. So this notebook failed. I'm sorry to say, but this notebook failed. And the reason it failed is because we have not changed it here. 6.7. This should be 1.3 because it is not able to handle such a big model. Now again, let's run this. Let's wait for this. Now you can run this on Olama, but since I am, uh, I'm on my Windows device, so I'm unable to run this. But in the model sections, you have the DeepSeek model, the DeepSeek coder being added and you can head over to your mac device and try it try this out using olama i have uh, last two videos dedicated to olama you can use that you can also use lm studio to download the model and uh, get your dsc running so let's wait so we can see this output here uh, this is the hole being filled by this code so here we are. Uh, I think you got the basic understanding of the DSC coder, how we can try this out. We have different models, uh, four types of models. It is able to beat the benchmark of the open source, almost all the all the open source models on the pre-trained models. But for the closed source models in the instruction tune, it is able to be at par with GPT 3.5 Turbo, but it's nothing comparable to GPT 4 and we do need innovations we do need improvement to get our model to uh, at par with gpt4 now having said that i would like to request you to go through this paper understand what the authors had in mind uh you know go through this uh, github repo understand what the authors had in mind when creating this and how you can create your own model this should be the end of this video and uh, very soon i will uh, bring out another video on uh, fine tuning of the models because uh, i think this should act as a precursor to that the next video so uh, stay tuned for the next set of videos uh, for fine tuning of a model and creating of a model like this at very low cost but since i was out for many days uh, pardon me for being not able to catch up on my schedule but yeah thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being a part of my channel and uh, allowing me to share the knowledge with you if you like this video please subscribe to my channel like and share this video with your friends and families until then happy thanksgiving and i will see you next time please check out the other videos on my channel thank you